Um, okay, let's get started then. So, my name is Lawrence. I'm from the Perpetual Protocol team, currently working as working in business development. Um, we have Danielle from Popsicle Finance here, and this is just going to be a brief AMA about the Popsicle Finance partnership, helping people from Perpetual Protocol learn more about Popsicle Finance and sort of what this partnership is aiming to do. Um, yeah. Uh, do you want to briefly introduce yourself, Danielle? Yeah. Um, I am uh, Daniele. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, Popsicle Finance, uh, Abracadabra Money, and uh, Wonderland. Um, I'm pretty much a full-time DeFi degen farmer and builder. <laughs> so that's pretty much what I do all, all my day. Um, a part of eating frozen food. Um, and um, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I really like uh, Perp Protocol, so there is a lot we can talk about. Uh, and I think uh, maybe we can also help uh, uh, the listeners that are coming from the Popsicle community understand also a little bit deeper how uh, the version 2 of uh, Perp works. And uh, maybe we can also talk about a little bit of our experience on uh, on Arbitrum. So what uh, what is going on down there? Because um, uh, our other protocol is uh, currently the number one in liquidity pairs across the board on Curve, and we have the highest TVL. So uh, might be interesting for people to experiment a little bit on Arbitrum and. Uh, I think uh, Y has been actually a very good choice for Perpetual Protocol to decide such in advance to go to, towards a layer two like Arbitrum. And um, mm. definitely going to talk about what is liquidity provisioning because this is very important and um, how Uniswap V3 works and um, how Popsicle Finance make it better. Yeah, sounds great. Do you think? Um, that's definitely what we're trying to do here. And I think towards maybe towards the end, I can speak a little bit more about Perp V2 and some of the other choices we've made. Um, I think to start, I'd like to start with what is Popsicle Finance? Yeah, <clears throat> so this is very interesting because um, I always say that uh, Popsicle Finance is the decentralized uh, citadel. So it's the market maker of DeFi. And in this case, I think that um, Perp is very similar to Robinhood because it's a consumer uh, application for trading. So it's, it fits very well as a description because in, in, the, in IRL or in the TradeFi world, uh, Citadel is the market maker of, uh, of Robinhood. So... Uh, Popsicle Finance, what it does is, uh, is basically what Yearn does for <coughs> liquidity on uh, on borrowing and lending. It does it for liquidity on liquidity provisioning on AMMs across the board and um, cross chain. It has been the first project to launch a token on three different chains, and uh, we have been working very closely with the NSWAP team and. And uh, we have been always very focused on understanding how bridging technology can work in a trustless way and uh, how we can interact with contracts across chains and distribute the liquidity in within AMMs, like, for example, PancakeSwap and the Uniswap and, and um, SpookySwap, SpiritSwap. And the more you name it, they are everywhere. And... Uh, <coughs> We have been very close to Sushi <clears throat> from the beginning as they have deployments on most of the chains now, what is AVM compatible. And um, we have been also close to the Solana ecosystem, trying to understand and trying to work with also with Radium and the AMMs, uh, more, more untraditional AMMs in the Solana ecosystem through the world mall bridge 
what what popsicle finance aim is basically right now i believe that um, most of the capital that is deployed on uh, liquidity provisioning is very inefficient being it on uh, version 2 type amm so uniswap like sushi like amm or b3 amm it's 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 very complex to figure out strategies on how to optimize and uh, get the best out uh, best yield out of your assets so what popsicle finance does is taking those assets and redistributes them accordingly to strategies that optimize and make you print more money so that's that's pretty much the idea behind it now some people might know that um, we were the number one bolt on uh, on V3 uh, Uniswap. Unfortunately, we have experienced an act um, that was very unfortunate, but uh, we have been uh, working towards uh, uh, getting security even higher standards. And, um, and that is really was the focus in the last month and a half. Um, doing um, uh, all the all the more than the best practices, to be honest, because before it was the best practices, but at this point we are going beyond the best practices and and really doing deep dive into free audits, um, open back bounties, and and um, formal verification. So it's really trying to make the best and most secure way to manage liquidity, especially uh, in the optics of uh, business to business uh, type of uh, type of deployments like in the case here. So <clears throat> so we let's say that no other V3 AMM so far, even though we have been hacked, has even reached close even one third of the TVL that we had, our strategies has been outperforming any other um, any other uh, deployment of vault like or popsicle like style things, and and this is because uh, because uh, I mean, guys, maybe you don't know, but my life is making sure that they make money on DeFi. So that's what I bring on the table for the users that decide to use our products. I want them to to make more money like I do. So I build things that I use. And uh, and that is maybe the difference that we have in front of any other. I think that that is uh, that is really the the main advantage that we have. Um, also, the experience with uh, units what we free, I think, is a match. Um, we have uh, the new design of the V3 vaults. is It's really, really, really strong and allows for liquidity mining in set specific ranges and uh, auto rebalancing. So not only uh, will allow projects to manage their treasuries more efficiently, but also in a case of like uh, the perpetual finance uh, and popsicle finance uh, um, uh, partnership will allow uh, the best execution for the money and the best returns for the liquidity providers that take the risk on um, on um, on selling the contracts. So it's it's very important. Yeah. Awesome. So I guess following up on the Uni V3 strategies you guys use. How does Popsicle determine its strategies and what's the process for changing these strategies mm -hmm. when they perhaps stop so, working? Yeah, well, um, first of all, um, I mean, at the beginning, uh, um, I set up the strategy, to be honest, and I decide what strategy goes. Um, then now we have transitioned to a model in which we onboarded strategists that make proposals and uh, each individual strategy is highlighted and people can join that specific strategy and there is a yarn like system in which uh, you could have multiple strategies on different pairs 
or multiple strategies on the same pair. And people can decide which individual strategy to join and the strategies is rewarded with part of the um, part of what it is, the revenue that is generated by the vault. Um, in, in the case of uh, the strategies that we have seen that uh, have performed the best, and those are the strategies that are still in use, but they're not released and they're still outperforming. Um, we have used a very, very simple strategy that is uh, stochastic volatility weekly. This is because uh, you set the range that pretty much covers what is the expectation of, of the movement on a weekly basis and uh, it concentrates the liquidity where it trades as the most efficient. Tighter um, has resulted historically in higher impermanent loss and no better results, actually worse results, because uh, every time you swap in to rebalance the position, uh, you're actually paying the AMM itself. Um, so it's it's not like in curve that you could have a positive slippage, for example, by adding a single sided certain uh, specific assets. Uh, on uh, on UNIV free, it's not like that. So you need to you need to be very careful to not amplify the permanent loss uh, in the case of rebalancing. Um, additionally, we are the only ones that uh, use uh, MEV for execution. So nobody can front run our uh, liquidity uh, liquidity rebalance, um, which is, I think, very important. Um, in the case of the arbitrum, arbitrum won't be the case, of course, because MEV is not supported and it's unnecessary. But um, on, uh, on a traditional uh, Ethereum, it is. Uh, then uh, how we onboard strategies, I mean, we, I can't pick them myself and um, when they come and uh, and then they, they do great work. We have a collaboration with Blockchain Research Lab that is the number one research lab in the world on blockchain development and uh, and they have done, they have uh, as clients like the, the state of Germany, I mean, they're, they're great and uh, they, they designed uh, strategies for us and and then we have uh, some unannounced strategies that you will learn about that are pretty good and famous so mm. awesome very excited to see what those will look like and uh following up on that i just wanted to ask about what sort of strategies will you guys be using for LPing for perpetual protocol yeah so we need to be very careful here so like perpetuals are not like traditional spot markets. So in the case of, uh, of perpetual protocol, um, my strategy um, would be to, to be not as tight as stochastic vola because that could, uh, could create an imbalance in the pool at a certain point, like how, how perp v2 works is not like traditional um, perpetual uh, perpetual markets on centralized exchanges. So you need to be very careful on how liquidity is distributed because I am assuming here that Popsicle Finance might be the only liquidity provider in the pool, you know. So we can't really swap against ourselves. So we need to be as efficient as possible with the potential of not having any tail um, to swap with. So right now, the idea is to go around 30%. And uh, we're doing some modeling and testing and looking about 30% of what the traditional AMM would do. Mm. So it would be about 70% more efficient on both sides. And that could, uh, could result in less impermanent loss in the uh, good um, good amount of earnings for the liquidity providers, but at the same time result in a much less slippage. So it would be about three times more efficient than uh, a V2 uh, strategy. Okay, yeah, awesome. Um, 
So you were mentioning some of the risks that are involved with Uni V3 uh, LPing through Popsicle Finance, which were MEV, which shouldn't be an issue on Arbitrum, and you're also talking about a permanent loss. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to maybe dive in and ask about what are the risks for providing liquidity with Popsicle Finance or... Yeah. Well, of course, the first... First, the first thing is that what we need to define what is the liquidity that goes into the V3 pool, right? So in this case, uh, you're minting V tokens, um, like uh, VUSDT, for example. Well, I think you launched with USDC at the beginning, right? Just. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so, so I don't know here um, how much familiar people is with... Um, with contracts, but maybe we can dive in into the differences in how an actual um, normal like uh, Binance perpetual USDT market looks like and how the perp one looks like. And then we look into how liquidity is provided, right? What do you think? Um, yeah, that sounds like something that's appropriate to do. So would- because I... I feel like that uh, we I um, not can assume that everybody understands how perpet- perpetuals work. So so basically what the perpetual is is very simple it's a contract. It's a contract that is denominated in dollars but it's worth something else. Like the liquidity is always done in the dollars and that's what happens in Binance. So I'm buying shares of that contract like for example, a thousand shares of certain contract denominated in dollars are worth X um, Ethereum. There is, there must be somebody else willing to sell me that contract if I want to buy it. And what happens is that every time that I issue these contracts, they need to be backed by something, right? And uh, and I can leverage these contracts because as long as the, the, the liquidation goes and the book is deep, then I, I could leverage it an infinite amount of times. Of course, uh, volatility uh, will kill me if I do 100x uh, with this uh, current state of market. But uh, it is quite normal in forex markets, for example, in, uh, in, uh, in traditional finance to go even 100 or 200 times long on a perpetual, which I, on a contract, on a futures contract for, for example, I don't know, euro dollar, right? So it's the, it's the same approach because the volatility is very small. Now, uh, what, uh, what the changes on a perpetual protocol instead is that you need to mint before. So it's more similar to how I would fund, I think, I don't know if, Maybe I'm wrong, right? So you can please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Lawrence. Eh? But I think the idea here on a user experience level, and I have not seen the final products, of course, but I, I've deep dived into all the rest, is that like in a traditional exchange, you would deposit dollars and then you would execute something, right? Here, you do pretty much the same. You deposit dollars into... Uh, perpetual protocol and then you can decide what you want to do right and uh, do you want to go 10 times long uh bitcoin for example then you're minting 10 times us uh, v usd see and uh, uh, you're buying the uh, btc contracts on the amf yeah that is pretty much correct i'll just give a a little bit more overview as well on top of that. Yeah. So the minting of the virtual USDC um, is sort of like the, the main purpose of it is to sort of almost act as like an accounting system for like getting leverage with perpetual protocol. Um, so these VUSDC tokens should theoretically not have any value outside of perpetual protocol. And What differentiates Perpetual Protocol from other decentralized exchanges out there and other exchanges is it's it's not a centralized limit order book, but instead it sort of trades with with its virtual AMM, sort of similar to Uniswap V2, 
So with Uniswap V3, we are moving over to... So with our PERP V2, we're moving to Uniswap V3. And with Uniswap V3, we'll offer better capital efficiency and sort of like adds an extra composability layer, like having popsicle finance built on top of us. So you guys can act as sort of like a liquidity provider for Petrol Protocol. Um, yeah. That's just a little bit extra. Yeah, I think uh, this is very good because of that reason, because I think one of the problems that uh, you had before was slippage, like very big slippage and um, 10x trades for the trader, a normal trader is a normal thing, right? Like 5x to 10x and uh, when you start doing 5x on 200k is already $1 million of a trade. You know, it's very fast that uh, you you start incurring in high slippage on a traditional AMM. So that's why uh, with uh, Popsicle Finance, uh, we can we can build on top of that. And additionally, I can add that I really like the permissioned part of this because uh, we have another project that is called Magic Internet Money, right? Dabracadabra, in which uh, um, as we are the number one stable coin at the moment on Arbitrum, um, we would love to build on top of PERP, and we will build on top of PERP, Perpetuals, backed by me. Yes, that'll definitely be very exciting, especially with our PERP v2, we'll be introducing multi-collateral, so not only, so eventually it won't just be USDC that you can sort of deposit as collateral, but we'll accept other stable coins and some few other uh higher market cap tokens such as wrap bitcoin and ethereum as well so it's definitely very exciting to see what happens there yeah i'm very excited to that because uh, you know how many times i i use uh, perpetuals uh, in uh, collateralized by bitcoin for example for bitcoin like that is uh, like a normal practice i think by most of the crypto space so it's, a, it's very cool yeah it's definitely something that uh, was pretty much adopted by BitMEX and sort of was held as like the gold standard for quite a while. So definitely something that's very exciting. Um, I now wanted to ask about what are some of the main differences between Popsicle and some of its competitors? Do we still have competitors, sir? I, <laughs> I think they all died. <laughs> we have been the one hacks and we still pretty pretty solid at the moment i mean they didn't even grow well what is the difference the difference is the architecture from the beginning we have to be with i really focus on making things decentralized and uh, our competitor number one had issues with centralization so that is the first thing and second is the performance like we have been beating everybody in performance with 4x to 5x the TVL in the same concentrated range. So you can imagine that those are the two biggest. And then, I mean, what can I say? I mean, the name Popsicle is cooler, right? Everybody loves Popsicles. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Everybody does love Popsicles. I mean, you can't hate Popsicles. Exactly, sir. I mean, and we all like ice too. Uh, so what can you do? <laughs> yes. it's it's built in it's culturally built in to to be successful <laughs> yeah definitely for sure you know it's all very cool so <laughs> mm. um, i'm really looking for has been very hard after the hack you know like like to uh, not to, to keep like the community has been very good we have been starting repaying everybody and everything is going well um, myself, I pledged uh, something that is now worth more than $7 million in recompensation. And uh, we have had uh, a lot of friends helping, like Darren Bank, Andre, everybody helping so we could take out loans and repay everybody. Uh, still, you know, like the hack is always something that uh, yeah, I have some post traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I, I'm going to make sure that. Um, in the next weeks when we relaunch is gonna be like diamond diamond yeah awesome 
So I just wanted to ask now, what is like the utility of the ICE token and like what can the ICE token do? Yeah, so you can stake ICE token and then you receive the fees that we charge to the to the liquidity provisioning for the strategies. Okay, and um, I just also wanted to ask about what some of the re- what other returns can someone expect from providing liquidity into these Uni V three vaults for perpetual protocol. So, so my opinion, my opinion is that. This is something that I wanted to propose in the next days, but I think we should do 0.05, so a 5 basis point vault, first of all, and not 30 basis points, because volume is going to be much higher than TVL. So in a, in a very concentrated fashion, I think that like uh, you can expect something like 150 to 200% APR on, um, on something like ETH. It is stable. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Um, yeah, I, I, and I'm being conservative, sir. Like literally, like I think we can do better because if we, if we really manage to, like uh, at the beginning, I will start quite large, like as I said, like around thirty percent and so. But then I will start t- going tighter and tighter as we understand the market, how it behaves, right? And uh, as tighter as we become, the better concentration we have, all the fees. At the end of the day, all the fees goes to the people that are inside. And I think we need a very small amount of liquidity to have a market that can trade billions of dollars a day. Right. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like pretty incredible. Like 200% APY is already APR is like, definitely something conservative yeah conservative that's pretty incredible you definitely can't find that unless you go full DGN. Yeah. so that's pretty amazing um, yeah i agree i mean i will be LPing this to death dude like i'll be printing money there with perp i'll definitely be LPing too that's that's pretty pretty <laughs> incredible <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any sense not to, right? I mean, who doesn't like making money just by looking at Netflix? I mean, I do. I yeah. love it. I definitely do, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of like the aim of this partnership, making sure that the liquidity providers um, are going to... I even think that there is going to be some sort of cap that we are going to have in these vaults to maintain this kind. Like, we don't need too much liquidity for making a market. Like, like on Binance, you don't need billions of liquidity per day deployed on the B- BTC perpetuals to be able to make it run six billions a day. Yeah, so. that's definitely true, actually. Yeah. Um, so you need to kind of consider it this way, right? How much actual liquidity do we need because of the partnership of Popsicle Finance with Perpetual Protocol to incentivize to be able to have the most efficient market on planet Earth, decentralized and the best fucking thing ever, and to take over the YDX, right? Not so much. Definitely not so much. That's That's the end goal. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah that's why i'm here sir make sure we all print love that um so my last question would be what pairs will be available to provide liquidity upon the launch of this partnership yeah btc and e then <clears throat> my my interest uh, i think that uh, let's not forget that we are going to arbitrium so we need to be a little bit careful on that, right? So, but I would love also to, as soon as in permission, less to also enable, for example, spell perpetuals and and others like ice perpetuals. Why not? <coughs> link, I think is a uh, chain link is a good one because uh, there is some arbitrage that can be done. Ah, about this. Huh. This is important. 
uh, I think we we kind of forgot this, but this is very important about the design of layer two. So a lot of perpetuals um, liquidity comes from arbing or cash and carry trades. Now, what of the one of the disadvantages that I saw? For example, Three Arrows Capital talking about this of DYDX is that the liquidity or the order book is highly incentivized in the case of um, DYDX because the liquidity provider doesn't earn any fees on the trades, right? Like in this case, it's different. So the liquidity provider is earning fees and trades and is earning a bunch without perpetual protocol having to directly pay for this liquidity, which is which is a big plus. I think people will realize that on the longer term when the DYDX token will be fucking diluted and worthless, like compound and all these shitty farm tokens that exist because Alameda is farming it all, shorting everything where the funding rates are positive and you can make money everywhere. A plus on top, you can even get the YDX token, like it's free, free Christmas lunch and dinner. Instead, here on uh, per protocol, we can really optimize everything to make sure that we don't get wrecked, that the people that actually believe in this protocol, and I guarantee you that there is enough already in this audience for make everything work smooth, gets the return, and everybody trades happily. Yeah, I love that. That's definitely the end goal for everyone to trade happy on perp and, you know, yeah. make that money. There is, that. yeah, and there is this this kind of, like, isolation that might be helpful in some way. It might be trading out superpower potentially on, 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 um, on layer two because there is, of course, the withdrawal time. But as soon as uh, I will be getting magic internet money on per uh, permissionless, then uh, there will be will be able to bridge um, magic internet money instantly from layer two to layer one, and that will allow velocity to be increased in between the potential arbitrage that exists on on the perp versus spot, and then move. Yeah, that definitely sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think now I think it's best to like just open it up to the people in the audience for a quick... Yeah. Um, they can ask any questions they want in general chat and be happy to answer any of them. Before they ask, I don't have a real crown green in my head. That's been confirmed now. <laughs> exactly. Um, the first question we have is, uh, when saw Beto? <laughs> Guys, I mean, it's not about me. Like, uh, really, at this point, it's just when Sertor finishes the the um, formal verification then it's all then it's on same day i don't care one click and 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 by the way alpha time the whole thing will look much much different than how it was looking before it's a whole popsicle v2 relaunch that's definitely very interesting Huge alpha leak. Alpha on the perp discord.
Is anyone coming to stage or are you going to ask the question how it's going to work? Uh, so there's been a question for the rewards in perps and how much will be allocated for this. I think a million, right? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I remember. So yeah, one million million perp, no, 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 dollars. (laughs) (laughs) Um, there's another question about the NFT proposal for Popsicle work in conjunction with Perp. Uh, NFT proposal of the ESV Kingers, or uh, they, we are working on it. It's quite complex to make all the art and put everything together. Is not like with the quality that I expect. Is it's gonna take a while. But I don't know, we didn't talk about, uh, I don't think per protocol has been, uh, we, we can talk about it for sure. Yeah, that's something I don't think we can talk about for right now. Um, another question is f- from the chat is, how is this different slash better than Lemma? Uh, this person apparently missed the part where it was called redundant. Well, better than what? Uh, Lemma. What is Lemma? I'm pretty sure it's another Uni V3 LP strategy protocol. I'm sorry, I I don't know them, so um, I can't really answer to these questions. I'm sorry. Um, I not can say I'm better than something that I don't know. Better than Visor, though. Yes, I can say. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think we'll take a few more questions before we have to wrap up. Yeah, I'm here. Maybe someone wants to join stage and ask their questions. Uh, I'm very happy if so. Yeah, Sirs, don't be letting, shy. I'll start letting some people onto stage. So, Papillion? Ciao, Papillon. Hello. Hello. I have a question. I'm wondering if um, in your other project, Abracadabra Money, would um, NICE be more likely to be considered as collateral to generate the uh, magic internet money um, as opposed to ICE simply because NICE becomes uh, yield bearing? Yeah, yeah, definitely NICE will be because it's nice to have NICE as collateral, right? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Unfortunately, what he said before about like the fact that like the main thing of the USD um, happens on um, uh, on an accounting reason, it's going to be very complicated to be able to like take something like um, a popsicle LP perp as collateral, but it's something that I'm looking into. Because that might be also very cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, We have another question from Alexa uh, asking when they plan to add liquidity for the MIM pool to Binance Smart Chain. Yeah, so I've been focused on trying to just get things rolling well on the other chains, but uh, we are coming. I already talked with um, EPS and uh, yeah, it's uh, taking a little bit, but uh, it's coming. And the the collateral is going to be cream BNB, so interest bearing finance, smart chain token.
Awesome. Um, maybe just a few more questions. I think there's some people still typing them out. Actually, a request from Metal Helmet. Hello, sir. Hello. I really appreciate your question. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I just been mute. Uh, any ideas? Uh, and what about an uh, audition of, uh, of the project? And any ideas about some kind of uh, safu uh, in case we will get some issues? Like it was in ice uh, for that case. Well, well, sorry, I, I couldn't really hear you well. If you can. Um, no, can you hear me? Now, yes. Yeah, so I'm asking about audits of the project and uh, do you have any ideas for some kind of Safu, uh, safu formed in case? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have had the insurance also before. So Bridge Mutual insures uh, all all the popsicle LPs. So you can buy your own insurance if you wish to. As a matter of fact, some people got their money back because of this reason. Mm, yeah, I I I mean, in case we we have some. Uh, issues like it was on 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 the ice when it was hacked and some some funds was stolen. Yeah, that's so. exactly what I uh, what I answered. You can yeah. buy insurance on Bridge Mutual as it happened before, and some people have been buying insurance even before the hack. And when the hack happened, they have been paid back by the insurance. Yeah. But in, but you need to 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 buy the insurance in your own, so there is not a full coverage for every every participant on the project. No, you need to buy it on your own, exactly. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. So, and you should buy also insurance for PERP protocol. If you're going to buy insurance for uh, for Popsicle LP, you should buy it also for PERP because the, 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 there is a contract, a smart contract risk on both sides. And also maybe on Arbitrum, because there is also Alpha, so it's uh, it's also dangerous. So if you really want to cover like a hundred percent of your your exposure on smart contract, you should cover Popsicle, um, you should cover Arbitrum, and you should cover um, you should cover per protocol. But I guarantee you that the fees that you're gonna make are so high that you can pay whatever and be happy. Hey, got it. Um, so we have another question from the chat. Um, besides Sorbetto, Fregola, and Limon, what are you most excited about for the future? Um, they said that you once talked about options. Yeah, I can't launch another token if not, I'm gonna die. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'm very excited uh, about the interaction between Popsicle and Abracadabra and, um, and Wonderland. That's what excites me. And, and especially, like, um, Wonderland has been, uh, the, it's a fork of uh, Olympus DAO, um, much more experimental on Avalanche. And <clears throat> uh, I really like that project because uh, part of the economics um, we are working on some creative part that uh, that builds up an RPG, um, so it's it's really fun, and with NFTs and stuff. So I'm very excited just because my mental space of DeFi has sort of a limit, and when I when I go to do things for Wonderland, I kind of enjoy doing something different. You know?
definitely that definitely sounds um very interesting um also a uh, bunch of people have asked any news on the impermanent loss protection yeah but <clears throat> it was audited by pack shield <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't launch it. I put it to audit more and more. That's why, like, uh, I don't trust this audit anymore. So that's that's what happened. But in permanent loss protection for V3, not gonna happen anytime soon. By the way. Um, okay. Uh, I'll invite the next two speakers as well. So indeed. Uh, okay, maybe I'll invite 15. I'll invite Sunnyside up. He seems to be online right now. Oh, sorry. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hey, um, first, I'd like to say thank you, Daniela, for that awesome night in Paris. Not sure if you remember. Yo, uh, dude. Yeah. Um, so the question I have is about meme on Phantom. So it's, it feels yeah. like it's not very stable when yeah. I try to swap it for any other stable coin. The, yeah, there's some slippage. So will there be maybe curve meme pool yes. on Phantom? So there is a. Um triple v2 that is a meme pool it's just that we haven't had time yet to move the incentives now if you have seen the last votes on the uh, curve uh, gauge uh, we have reached about like 20 plus percent of all curve crv rewards being sent to the meme triple that means that we are transitioning 50 percent out of the spell rewards from what is the current emission towards that pool and we are moving half of that to phantom so we will start building up that liquidity there <clears throat> um, yeah awesome and uh yeah. one more question what is there any time frame we can get on when there will be more options for borrowing on abracadabra on phantom yeah so well, this is Alpha Leak, but we are uh, going to launch together with your new options. Oh, OK. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, indeed. Did you have a question? Yeah. So yeah, first of all, thank you, Daniel, and your team. It's awesome that you keep up the decentralized spirit. I love it a lot. And uh, just a quick question, uh, any plans for Time Wonderland to go cross-chain too? Um, no, not right. yet. Right. Um, I, I am a cross-chain kind of, you know, everything. But for now, no. Like, I was talking this morning early with Zeus um, about, like, how to efficiently manage um, certain type of liquidity cross-chain for OM. Um, but what I said is that I think that um, WS OM should go cross-chain and not OM itself because nobody's going to LP um, OM, right? Because it's a dep depreciating asset on a theoretical level because it doesn't have the rebate. So we started like implementing the WSOM standard on Abracadabra for this reason, to start to have this um, wrapper adopted. Um, so I feel like one of the things that is going to come is very likely um, Wonderland to start LPing WSOM versus Magic Internet Mine and take that as, um, as, a, as a bond right uh, for bonding uh, as part of the reserve then uh, likely 
um, Popsicle manage the cross-chain deployment of that across multiple chains. So it manages this uh, WS on liquidity um, across Avalanche, Phantom, uh, Chail, or whatever comes to your mind and move, move it around. Awesome. Uh, so we have a couple more questions from the chat. Uh, they want to know about investment LP recommendations based on scanning wallet portfolios. Will that happen this year? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Awesome. And also, is it feasible for Sorbetto to be covered entirely by a bridge mutual insurance? Instead of individuals getting yeah. covered separ- like personally, yeah, well, very very complex to pull off. Like um, it, like Limon is will be harder than uh, uh, than Fragola uh, because of the TVR will be much higher. So I don't know. We can kind of have like a button that um, in the UI ask you do you want a coverage right away like that was something we're working on with bridge mutual so we can like sell the take out the fee directly from the lp hmm. but uh, it's something uh, we're not working on actively and i think this would be the last speaker of 1500 badger yeah, what I can what I can say about also is that I'm gonna put a lot of money on uh, on popsicle at the relaunch just to show that if it's gonna happen again, I'm going belly up again too. I'm gonna be wrecked forever. <laughs> <laughs> I've been the probably the top one or top two that lost money on the hack. So. Um. Hi, how's it going? Oh. Um, my 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 question for you is it, you know, really impressive all the work that you're doing, all the projects you're involved in. So, you know, are you are you sleeping? Are you eating? And what is the size of the team that you're working with? And then also, you know, what 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 do you do with your time management? Like, are you doing 70, 80 percent of your time towards all these existing projects, and then spending a bunch of your, you know, twenty percent of your time looking for new things? Or, or yeah, could you just give us an idea around that? Yeah. So, our team is small. Um, it's about 11 to 12 people. Um, my time management sucks. Uh, I basically work all day, <laughs> all the time. Uh, but I do, I would say, 40% research, right? So I'm always looking at stuff. I always I proactively do things in DeFi constantly. So just I'm always up to date to what is happening. Mm. Searching opportunity, making sure I'm on top. I do a lot of now zero development, pretty much like uh, only high level, um, because uh, I focus a lot on business development at the moment. So we can scale very fast. Um, on the chains and things that we need. And uh, uh, I am actually right now in a, in a hotel, kind of hotel called like, um, um, how is it called this fucking place? One sec. Well, Chenot Palace. It's like a vegan fucking thing that they give you food and shit. And uh, I do like uh, one hour um, of massage a day and... Uh, 40 minutes of some treatments, like a fucking, um, they, they basically put you like uh, mud <laughs> and they make you uh, sweat and stuff like that just to keep like a balance of, uh, of the diet and things like, and I came here for a week um, for this. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, I try to stay as healthy as possible. I did all the exams, actually. I'm pretty healthy, thanks God. But, yeah. I hammer it. 
Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's impressive all the all of the projects you're working on. Just one one last question. Can you just like just in a couple of sentences explain the the differences between magic internet money and time? Yeah. So time is uh it's more like um an experimental currency, right? It's more like a uh, Bitcoin, like where the price is not as pegged as uh, to the dollar, while magic internet money, on the other hand, is more like USDT, which, uh, but in a decentralized way, so multi-collateralized by yield bearing assets. Awesome, thank you. So basically by, yeah, by, by being collateralized by yield bearing assets, it reduces also at the same time, the um, potential liquidation threshold. So it increases, um, yeah, it reduces the, 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 the cost of the loan to value, or it reduces the close to the liquidation ratio as time passes. So basically it, it grows TVL over time by itself, which is, which is strategically helps maintaining the peg and collateralizing more and more. So that's pretty cool. The future of France. The future of France. Awesome. I think I just have one last question from the chat. Is ICE going to go on to AVAX? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you know? Yeah, it's going. Yeah, I think today or, yeah, or tomorrow. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't know at all, actually. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this definitely. Uh, you know? Now. You knew? Yeah, so how new? Uh, yeah, you did. Uh, well, well, of course, like it needs to be on avalanche. Yeah. By the way, like today we uncovered the fact that uh, Ave uh, was deployed on uh, was going to deploy an avalanche without Avex being an asset to borrow against, which is kind of funny. And. Uh, and uh, and this kind of like a bullish case for magic internet money because as soon as the curve deploys, we're gonna have a start to pushing the incentives there on the meme pool. We're gonna fuck them because we're gonna have the lowest uh, cost of borrowing. Bye bye. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah dude. bye bye. Moon. <laughs> yeah. um, I think we yeah. just have one more speaker. So, Alex. Come, Alex. Oh, I've sent you an invite, Alex. I'm not sure if you got it, but the invite's been sent. Hmm. Yo, my man. Can you hear me now? All right. Ciao, sir. How are yes. you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Beautiful. Good. Morning. Long time. Yep. Everything is red. I have a question about Abra. Have you ever had liquidation on use uh, on like Yarn Vault or Convex? No. Thank you, sir. I can sleep safely now. Yeah, um, suggestion. Um, there is a mode that I call the Sifu mode. It's 86 to 87% loan to value on the convex tree pool. And um, then you fold the maximum to 6, uh, to 10, so it's 6.5. And then you manually fold till 8.2 times. Uh. Very degen, sir. <laughs> if it's something as close to liquidation, that is as close as you can get. How many times are you folding the free pool? Yeah, you don't want to know. <laughs> About 20. 
20 times you're folding. Oh, let me double check. My health is like uh, 11%, <laughs> I want to say. Jeez, dude. <laughs> well, I didn't see anyone close to liquidation, so you're pretty safe, dude. Oh, no, actually, it's it's thirty one percent, huh? Okay. Yeah, not bad. No, I don't think. I think it's very difficult that, like, to be close, like especially on three pool, very hard. Where are you taking the prices from for like uh, the three pool LP token? Yeah, we construct the price from uh, the three pool, and uh, and then. As as it is just a free pool, it's better, it's easier, because the yarn vault is a little bit more complex, but uh, there is a built-in oracle on curve. So it's still like back to stables himself, I guess. Yeah, the fallback is, is $1, uh, the lowest one. So the fallback is that it takes the price for the one that is, and it, it calculates how much the weight of that is inside. Right, thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not a huge fan of the triple anymore, because of the reason that I think is uh, there is a high, very high USDC risk at the moment. But uh, that's why a lot of people I saw have been folding less than you, like have been more conservative on the folding because I think I feel like seventy eight percent on stable is quite good enough, you know without really risking, like. Are you concerned about, like, USDC opting out of DeFi and just blocking? Yes. Yeah. I think if they go that route, they'll give, like, I don't know, at least a fucking week to withdraw everything. Otherwise... Dude, I hope. But how is that going to week look like? Well, yeah, I see your point. Uh, like, that's the only... Like, yeah, maybe you can withdraw, but how many people is going to try to dump those USDCs and where? I don't know. I'm also concerned on this, like, gelato situation with DAI, and I've been quite, quite vocal recently against DAI because I don't like the idea of them saying, like, oh, yo, you know, like our um, <laughs> PSM, uh, it's not anymore with just USDC, so regulation, we are not the USDC wrapper. Uh, we actually have an LP with DAI and stuff like that. And I'm like, bah. Like, I, I don't like this kind of tricks because then the regulator is kind of more angry, right? Like, that's kind of the problem also with all this, like, VC-backed kind of huge massive things because like there is real us mine inside and the regulator is going to look into it like there is people that have invested 200 300 million dollars of vc funding you know i think we have just one final question from the chat um, so he's asking you, do you have any alpha leaks from your meeting with Charles? <laughs> no. Fine. Okay. I think that's... Charles, Charles is my father. That's the alpha leak. Oskinson. All right. Thank you, Alex, for coming up, by the way. Thank you, everybody, for, for coming and asking yeah. your questions. Thank you, Danielle, for coming and uh, taking the time to answer some questions about Popsicle Finance. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and hanging out in the audience. Um, this was a lot of fun. I hope you guys got a lot of alpha and learned a lot from this. And very excited about the future partnership and the partnership with Popsicle with the Petro Protocol and love to see where it goes. I'm excited too.
and uh, up only for perp and ice. Yeah, up only. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for coming. Thanks everyone.